for Tulane Green Wave basketball, courtesy of Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2020. <clears throat> so, just checking as usual. Keep an eye on the device. Make sure we're going. Make sure we get a green dot. It says I'm going. There we are. All right. So, uh, as people sort of trickle in here, we'll just do a little bit of a brief overview of where we're at, and, and then we'll dive into our recruiting. So, it's been a week, so this also helps me remember where I'm at. <laughs> All right. So, you can see here our head coach. Uh, we've got how many years? We're a few years into this now. Head coach, is this our 10th year? I guess that means. Um, take a look at our skills. You know, we're definitely getting there. Recruiting is almost up to a 70. Uh, player development looks great. Scouting always lags behind for me a little bit, uh, probably because I always skimp on my scouting coaches, so that doesn't really carry over as much, I think. Uh, you can see here on our coaching stats, uh, we've made three tournaments. Last year we actually made the Sweet 16. Uh, I think that was also the year we got this Conference Coach of the Year and a few All-Conference players. So our head coach is looking good, still 40 years old. Got quite a, quite a few years left on that coach. Take a look. You can see here our job goals. Qualify for the NIT. If we don't do that, I'd be so embarrassing. What's up, Chris? Yeah, I'd be so embarrassed if we didn't make the NIT. This should definitely be an NCAA team. Uh, we did lose anybody that watched the last episode. Uh, the email is now deleted, but we lost three players off of last year's teams to transfers. The email's gone. So we actually lost uh, Ben Grundy, who was a backup center. We lost Arthur Nixon, who was a starting small forward. And then we also lost our backup small forward, and his name is escaping me for the moment. So this team isn't as deep as it could have or maybe should have been, uh, but we've still got a lot of players here that I trust, uh, a whole lot of talent here. I'm still very excited about this season. So I definitely think this is an NCAA team, and hopefully they can compete for another Sweet 16. Uh, I would have liked our chances better with those players still around, but... You know, here we are June 26th. The nice thing about that handful of guys leaving is now we've got a nice uh, pool of scholarships here to pull from. Oh, that was recruit class. So I haven't checked this out yet. Uh, one quick thing. Let's look at who's leaving. So we will lose Stetson. He's a scholarship point guard. We've got Haywood to fill in behind him. He'll be a junior next year, but we definitely want to refresh that pipeline of point guards coming through. So... Take a look at our shooting guards here. A couple of juniors. Hopefully they'll both stick around. Uh, this freshman's a walk-on. We do need some small forwards. We have this freshman. Everything else we have at, at that position is a walk-on because we just lost the two transfers. So that's definitely a position to need. We might even want to grab two there. Uh, Kevin London's a very highly rated freshman. We will lose Ladeau after this year. Uh, and then we still have Lease back there. I don't know. He doesn't. He didn't develop much in his first year. I don't know that that will get any better going forward. Uh, so Malone will also be gone. Higgins could go at any time. So we definitely want a handful of big men, at least two, if not three, one or two small forwards and a point guard. We probably uh, just lay off of the shooting guard at this time unless uh, you know it gets to that point where uh, we can get better value there at the shooting guard. Uh, I'm pretty sure we have five scholarships, but let's jump over here and check it out. Uh, I'm going to start off and just, you know, as usual, probably, well, we got six scholarships. So we might be able to grab one at each position and then try to get um, a third big man, whether that's a power forward or center. Because I would like, you know, both those shooting guards, they're both good. And I just hate, like, basically starting over. Uh, so maybe we can can break that up a little bit they'll both be juniors we bring in a freshman for next year and then kind of space that shooting guard class out a bit so uh we're just going to kind of go one of each probably so we're going to want to get the full recruit list but let's break this down by uh, our region first and first and foremost let's jump into our state check out that recruiting list so let's see we got a couple of four-star guys here three guards and a power forward so let's add all of those guys I'm also gonna jump over and check out 
Flo Rida. So I'm nervous about their GPAs. We will go ahead and add Hargrove. <clears throat> now we can pull it back to the, that southeast region as a whole. So we do have, I think, four guards on our list so far. So we'll try to not go too heavy on the guards here, but... So we can probably get... Um, we can still go to Great Plains and grab a couple. I don't think I went as heavy into that region this year because we're a little bit tight on money. So, point guards... Ooh, 2.4. That's so borderline. Two, we're going to skip him. He's already on a list. So we got about six point guards there. Get another couple from the Great Plains. Perfect. See what the shooting guards look like over here. Ooh, they got a handful. Let's see what the Southeast actually has for us first. Before we get too deep into the other regions, we're laying off the 2-3. We will... Hargrove's already on the list. All those guys. That's all Florida and Louisiana. So all the good shooting guards in the southeast are all Florida and Louisiana. That's awesome. So I guess we do need all of these Great Plains shooting guards, or at least a lot of them. There we go. Let's jump over and check out these small forwards. We'll add both those five-star guys and then see what we got in our home region before we see how many we want to come back for. All right, we got about... We threw in four. Uh, we can throw in three or four more. Yeah, so not a whole lot of depth there, actually. 2.5 on a five-star guy. We'll go there for sure. Oh, 2-2. Two, two. Yikes. This is not very bright. Apologies to anybody out there that's carrying a 2-2 two, two GPA. But, uh, yikes. Not a lot of big mans in either region this year. So, let's expand this into the Midwest region. I think geographically that would probably be the closest. Of course, we don't have any reports or anything from over there, but we just need a, a talent pool to pull from. The unfortunate thing here is we don't get their GPAs. So we just got to be careful if we offer scholarships to these Midwest big guys. There's a power forward Juco. Nah. I think I like the list that we have for now. Oh, we should check before I go to that full recruit list. Since we do need uh, power forwards and centers, we might as well check out this international region. <laughs> Number one. Let's see. Here's a couple of four-star power forwards. Do we have any centers? Yeah, big man from England. Ooh, look at this. Main Ortiz from Spain. He's only got the three stars, but throwing up 17 and 11. Yeah, we'll put him on the list, too. All right, now let's bounce back to the call and watch list. What's up, Breeze? Glad to have you, buddy. All right. So, here is our full list. Let's get cracking on the film. And see if anybody wants to come in for visits, which is always... Uh, so far at Tulane been a bit of an adventure but it's actually really good for us this year seeing as how our budget is limited alright so we'll stick with that uh, nobody that's on our list at all uh, I don't think I get that joke I don't I don't know any songs that are current at all in the world to be honest
Let's see what this first week gets us. Look at that. Interest right away from the top-rated power forward. Brian Cole from Arkansas jumps all the way up to warm. So uh, our assistant definitely got us moving there in the right direction. Let's grab some film on these guys that I, for some reason, must have just clicked right past. There we go. <laughs> I'll have to check it out after the stream's over, because I have no idea what that's about. All right, he still doesn't want to come. Brian Cole has already visited. I don't know why it's so hard to get him to visit. We're going to skip the international. I guess we should go and see what our school prestige is. I don't... I, it went up by, like, seven last year, I think. So we should be right around 30... Eight, if I recall correctly. Nobody wants to come play for us. Come on. There we go. Joe Charles is going to come in. Belton, no. How? We must have unlocked his GPA as part of the recruiting process. We need to get him off our list. We didn't have the internationals, if you remember. Um... Oh, we're all out of hosting scholarships. Let's get our scout lives in. Some of these top guys that have a lot of interest. And now let's see if we can unlock some stuff. You know, we're up to 70 recruiting. This has got to be getting better, right? A little better. We got two there. We can get Brian Cole to open up. Maybe a little bit more. He apparently had a good campus visit. You don't have anything to say about team prestige? I bet you do. Ahmad Trico out of Ohio. So, yeah, we're definitely unlocking these GPAs uh, once we start calling. So that's good to know. I, I just so rarely recruit without having the reports. I don't even remember some of this stuff. So we're definitely having to branch out a little bit, try some new uh, different things here as we try to get Tulane up and running because they just do not have the depth in state that, that those teams in Florida did. Uh, we could just sit in Florida and recruit all day and not have to look anywhere else, and now we do. So, all right, time is out for phone calls this week. Well, let's skip on ahead and see how some of these camps start going. Jump over, check out the inbox. Eric Brown didn't care for it. Cool visit. Whitfield didn't care for it. That's all right. Sometimes they change their mind, sometimes they don't. Mm. So Whitfield's actually the MVP of the Indy Elite Camp. I don't think any of those other top five are on our, on our list. At least not that I recognize immediately. Oh, Warhank. I had me a, I had a Jeff Warhank in one of my best Louisville saves. That was awesome. Good name, good call back there. So, J.J. Morris out of Florida. It's a power forward. Might be a little bit under-recruited. We could take a look at. As well as Johnny Harris. J.J. Morris and Johnny Harris. Let's see if we can add those guys. If the GPAs allow it. They're both out of Florida. Oops. Yeah, we can... A 2-5 is close enough. We can give him a go. Johnny Harris is a 3.0, but we're full. So, who don't we love that's on our list? Let's see real quick if any of these other GPAs we've unlocked. Uh, yeah, we'll remove you. So, back to the Florida Centers. Get Johnny Harris on our list. Now, 
we're pretty well set up. All right. Skip on ahead and let our recruiting actions take place for that week. So still got 21,000 team budget. Not great, not terrible. Let's get this back to sort of by overall. All right, we got the Las Vegas information as well. So we're not recruiting anybody out west, but here's here's the guys that finished top five in the camp. We'll keep an eye on that. We'll save that email uh, going forward. So if we need to go back and pull from it, we always have that option available to us. All right, so a couple more here that didn't think the visit was worth it. Given that our recruiting budget's so tight, unless these guys, like Frazier Whitfield... I mean, he's not even in our region. He's very highly ranked, but we should probably go ahead and just save the money from these calls. You know, if somebody visits, go ahead and pull them off of these lists. Not had a whole lot of luck. Uh, Jarrett Wallace, I'm going to leave. He's from, he's from in-state. James Hodge doesn't want to come. Skip the international. All right, even the two-star guy doesn't want to come. Oh, yeah, managing managing both would be awesome. Being able to see the guys that you recruit go up into the pros, see where they're drafted, actually draft them, put them on your team, and that would be real cool. Uh, do we need to watch more film? Why not? Get some more of our call minutes out. All right, so he was willing to talk there. Breeze, uh, what's your what's your season? What's your playthrough looking like? Who are you with? All right, another week of actions complete. Let's check out some more camps here. Brent Emery, Eric Brown, Brian Arnold. Pretty sure Kenny Seals is on our list, or else he was one of the high performers at one of the national camps. So you're gonna restart with Boston College then when when you uh, when you restart. There's Ahmad Trico. I know he's for sure on our list and has a little bit of interest, so that's definitely somebody to keep an eye on. I think we need to advance one more time. I think we've already got our actions taken care of for this week. Yep. All right, so there's our two visits. They both had a decent time, so nobody else to kick off the list for now. Seems like everybody that's wanted to visit has gotten a visit. We can try some of these again. Oh, it's a dead period, so no, we can't. So let's see, who still needs to unlock some information for us? Hollier? No, he doesn't want to talk. Fair enough. Not always in the mood to talk. I get it. He likes facilities. We can we can hold our own on facilities as long as we're not going against any of the blue blood programs. Let's see what we can get on Trico.
Oh, he really likes location. That's going to go against us. Who else we got? DJ Williams. What do you want to hear about, my man? Well, playing time? Yeah. We got everything else on him already. Let's get some of these guards. Get through this dead period. That way we can go back and try to get some more guys on a campus. Look at all the interest that unlocked that week. Got a whole lot of these guys that are at least thinking about us now. We got one new one to come in. Two new ones to come in. Three. There we go. So now they're starting to roll on in. There's a handful of them. All right there in the top 25, so that's definitely a good thing. So let's go check some of these folks out. Get those live recruiting actions in. Tom Smith, we'll go check you out. Prater. Uh, let's jump on Cole. He's still really warm. I really like that. Um... You know what, instead of wasting too much time calling right now, let's skip through this camp, and then I want to see uh, how these visits go on these top guys that just got interested, because some of them may stay interested after the visit, and some of them are going to lose it. So that was a summer camp. Get another summer camp, and then our recruiting actions will take place. So uh, two more simulations here real quick, and then we'll go and take a look at everything at once. So it should be our last camps. And you can see here, uh, Fields still liked it. Hollier and Prater did not. So get them out of here. We're about halfway through our budget here, which isn't too bad. And we've probably gotten most of the on campus visits that we're actually going to get. And you can see there, one appreciated, the other two did not think it was worthwhile. Excuse me. So, of course, Prater, the one that didn't care for it, was the MVP of the camp. Clifton Branch, Ryab Davis, Rick Lang, and Brian Cole from Arkansas. So, uh, Brian Cole likes us. We like him. That's probably a, a scholarship offer there. Excuse me. Uh, and then here's our Big Apple. And again, we're not recruiting out of the America East right now, so I'm not too awfully worried about it. But it is nice to know what's out there. So let's get over here and start narrowing this down. Uh, as I just said, you know, Brian Cole is certainly looking like a good offer. We still need to unlock a couple of categories on him. So let's do that real quick, if we can. Oh, we got one of them. We can always call him back later if we need that last one. So it looks like he's really interested in facilities. Location, playing time, also going to be an issue. Top five at Memphis. Uh, doesn't look like we got notes on his other camp, but uh, his school prestige is relatively low. That's definitely a good thing. So I think we should have a shot with him. That's definitely an offer. GPA's outstanding. Um, I didn't see. He's a hardworking kid. Pretty uninterested in, acad oh, just academics as a pitch area. I was going to say, he's got a 4.0. All right, so I think that's a pretty good target for us. Take a look here at shooting guard. Whew. Looking a little rough. Does Hargrove want to come in for a visit yet? Nope. Let's see if any of these guys do. Bogans will come in. Hampton and McDermott. So a handful of these guys from the Great Plains will come in. Our shooting guard from Florida is still not interested. He didn't really have a good, a good camp. We're not really too awfully interested in him right back. So take that. Let's see, Bogans. Uh, let's move on from shooting guard right now. Nothing's, nothing's standing out yet. Take a look here at the small forward. We don't have a huge list.
So he's top 25 at Memphis. Fields. All right, we didn't go to his. We didn't go to his camp. Uh, whoo, look at Tom Smith, ten rebounds a game, seven steals. So Fields is obviously a, a better offensive player, but Smith is killing it on rebounds and steals. Take a quick look at those ratings. I mean, yeah, you can see their Fields with the scoring and the inside game. Smith with the outside game. The defense looks tight. Better blocks, much better steals. And then Fields actually more athletic. Is Smith one of the ones that's coming in for a, for a visit? Huh. Uh, just the high school stats alone. Uh, he's got a 2-8. He'll qualify. I think that's that should be an offer. Not a ton of interest over here at power forward either. I think... Branch was easily top five at Memphis. Uh, of course, he has no interest. Why would he? Larry Miner. Um, he apparently did not compete at Memphis. Uh, let me skip ahead one more week. I need to see where these handful of Southeast recruits that just became interested, that just agreed to come in on visits. Let's see how those go before we get too much further into this <clears throat> all right so we're rolling from july on into august now uh, this is the month where we definitely uh, hone in and see who we want to be bringing in ah oh, check that out we got a norton award finalist and it's marquette holmes so a little bit for Agalia there to rub it in. Dermott had a good visit. Hampton had a good one. Bogans had a good one. So all those shooting guards from the Great Plains all came in and had good visits. Let's see where Holmes is on this list. Where's our man from Tulane? All right, he, he's number 50 on the list, but you know what? He made the list. So we'll see how that goes once the season actually starts. Maybe he'll move on up a little bit. All right. So back to trying to identify where we make offers, where we don't. Our point guard offer is already out to Brian Cole. Shooting guard. So now we got a little bit more warm interest. Well, Odie Bogans. Definitely with some interest over here. Talented player that could work harder. Not crazy about that. Not a leader, but doesn't cause problems. He does have recurring injury issues. Not crazy about that. Where's our other option here? Josh Hampton. All right, so no, nothing negative on Hampton. Uh, we do need to pop over into our inbox and check out what kind of information we got back from that Great Plains camp. I'll, mm, I don't remember. Let's see. All right, so we didn't get... Oh, is that the right... No, that's not right. We need Houston. Kenny Seals is the only shooting guard on that list. And he is not on this list. Let's see, how did Joe Charles look? He didn't have a good camp. Call your Simon. He was all right. He was all right. Let's make our let's make our offer up here. You know we're at, at Tulane can't go that that far wrong bringing in top sixty recruits. They just can't. Small forward. We've got our offer out. He still doesn't want to visit. It's not a great sign, but we've definitely had worse. And remember, we could always go two small forwards here, and if we needed an extra big man, slide one of them up. So Fields definitely is not out of the running or out of the question as far as getting a scholarship offer. That's for sure. How'd Farmer do at his camp? He's top 25, so another good player there to take a look at. As far as power forwards go, 
you know, I don't see why we don't just go all in. The dude's top five in the nation. The stats don't at all lie. They can't lie when they're, they look like that. It's absolutely impossible. Uh, I don't know, it doesn't even matter what his notes say. I don't even need to look at it. He is interested in school prestige. That'll hurt. Location uh, could help us. His parents like academics. That could help us. Very wealthy with all my mater at Ohio State. That's interesting. But, you know, we swing for the fences around here. It's what we've been doing the whole time in this stream. Uh, why stop now? It's way more interesting to see a huge get like that than, you know, watch somebody play it safe. So, Trico, I know, did well. He is really lo interested in location. Uh, but we can compete with Coach Discipline, that's for sure. Uh, maybe on maybe on facilities. Um, playing time, I don't know, that's questionable. Depends on if Higgins sticks around or not. But I really like him. Uh, that's going to get a, He's getting an offer. Now, for this last one, I want to give it to either a, either a center or a power forward. Oh, we got a couple of, that agreed to visit us there, at least. Let's see how these southeast centers did. All right, so here, Crozier is a top 10 center at Memphis. So that's looking pretty good. You know, 13 and 10. So not, not a crazy score, but definitely putting the work in on the rebounds, the blocks, the steals. He's got a good evaluation. I don't know if we need to go any further than that. I think we can just stop right there. He's got a GPA that should be good enough to get in. Uh, let's double check the power forwards just because we are shooting so very high. Let's see if there's anybody else that's close that we should be interested in. He didn't st stand out at Memphis. We're not going to have anything on the international. How did Branch do? He's top, top five. Clifford's easily top five with no interest, of course. Lynch was Midwest. We won't have him. He's top 25. Yeah, I think that's number six. All right, so we really can't host anymore. We can try to unlock some more of these pitches. So that's really all we have to do. We're going to unlock these pitches on our six scholarship offers the best of our ability and as soon as we're done with that we're simming ahead and getting to these in-home visits and if you haven't been here the last couple of recruiting times you can't just call these guys back it's not like previous years where uh you know once they hung up on you you couldn't talk to them anymore that week i feel like that used to be a thing uh if it didn't maybe i made that up but uh, i always thought that was a thing and then i got surprised you know playing this version of it that you can just call as many times as you want. Trico, we're good. All that's unlocked. I don't think we've talked to Miner at all unless our assistant... Oh, yeah, we closed him out. Never mind. Tom Smith. Him, we need a lot of information on. Come on, Tom. Tell us what you want to hear about, buddy. A little team prestige, a little coach discipline. All right. So that's all our phone time for now. Let's get on to the 14th of August. Give old Tom a call back. A little PT, a little, a little school location. What are you thinking? All right. You're going to run. I hear you, man. Y'all good? We'll call you back. We'll play time, facilities. How about your parents? You want to talk about that? Okay. <clears throat> so, got him finished off. Bounce over to the shooting guard. Oh, Bogans, all the way up to warm. Carl McDermott, also warm. Is there a reason we didn't? I just can't remember. Oh, yeah, the recurring injuries. That's why we don't like them. Bogans, we got a couple more categories to unlock. Ooh, 
trying to figure out what team you're going to manage in pro basketball 21. I always have such a hard time once it gets to pro basketball. Because I never really know, like, I feel like from year to year I choose different teams that I want to like, follow or, or root for. So good luck settling on a team there. I do traditionally like to take over a team that hasn't had a lot of success in the past. Just because I think it's cool to like build something from the ground up. So, you know, grab a team that, that traditionally just hasn't been great. And, I mean, it's it's harder to find in the NBA. Most teams at least have a championship here or there. Uh, I don't like, even though the Celtics are cool and, you know, they got the cool four and uh, uniforms that really stand out. They got so much history. I don't ever feel like I'm doing anything with a team like Boston. So, I like to grab, like, the Atlanta Hawks or the Denver Nuggets or something. Uh, that's usually the way that I tend to go. All right, we're out of time. We need to advance another week. He is unlocked. Cole. Still got one more category to unlock with you. Ah, oh, come on, give it to me. Thank you. I'm just going through. I think we've got all these unlocks now. Oh, he's huge on location, but we are in region, so that's helpful for us. As long as he doesn't end up at being a South Carolina Gamecock or something. Ooh, Jonathan Harris, number seven on his list. We do need to unlock information on Harris. An expansion team would also be cool. I'd bring back the uh, like the Seattle Supersonics, or I mean, being a Kentucky guy, I like to bring back the Kentucky Colonels. Why was I unlocking information on Harris? We're on his list, but we didn't offer him. That was the in-home. Oh, he's got tremendous work ethic. Where is it? Oh, he's from Oklahoma, so we don't have the camp info on him. I like him, mostly because he likes us. Crozier, we just need to unlock facilities. He, he's going to be a location guy. We don't need to worry about him. Guys, let's skip ahead a couple weeks here and get to our in-home visits. But yeah, Breeze, it's awesome. I think uh, bringing back like the Kentucky Colonels or uh, you know the Sonics. I don't know, you do the Harlem Globetrotters or something. Uh, I guarantee there's some really cool like downloads and, and user-created stuff out there. On NBA 2K, uh, I was able to go out and find like user-created college logos. So I had my team set up as the Louisville Cardinals as an NBA team. I had it stacked, man. It had like the court, the uniforms, everything. It was really cool. The user uploaded content actually had like a couple dozen versions of their uniform. So I really enjoyed that. So if you got a college team that you like way more than a pro, uh, maybe you just throw that college team up as an NBA franchise and take that over. Uh, we got all our info unlocked. We could, what we can do, the only thing I'm going to do is ask if any of our offers want to come in for a visit, the ones that haven't so far. And they do not. Yeah, or you could even bring back a team that, like, you know, used to exist. Uh, like a... I mean, the teams all move around and stuff, but, you know, like the NFL, the St. Louis Rams or something, where now, you know, it's the L.A. Rams. Maybe you figure out a way to, to bring them back, you know? We got all our scholarships out. Well, what do we have this week? Is this practice begins? Oh, this was a couple of visits that we never checked. Excuse me. Crozier did not like the visit, but yet he still shows some interest. Or at least he did last I checked. Yeah, there he is. He's still got some interest. Not on his top ten list. But, so let's see what happens once we get to these in-home visits. Minor, I have almost no expectation. Um, all the rest of these guys, I mean, we could get a couple of them. If we even got three of these guys, it would be an excellent recruiting season. So, um... Let's just see what happens here. I don't want to get down on ourselves if we don't pull all these in because we were just absolutely shooting 
for the moon, guys. You can see four of our six offers here to top 60 players. And a quick look at our school prestige, 39. So we're definitely overshooting. If we land them, that's great. If we don't, we never should have belonged in the discussion to begin with. So that's all right. Oh, yeah, the Vancouver Grizzlies moved on to Memphis. That would be a cool one. You just got to come up with a new nickname. All right, let's see if any of these guys commit without giving us a chance for an in-home. So Tom Smith did go to Memphis. So we'll need to find a new target there. And it looks like that's the only one we 100% lost. All right, small forwards. Uh, Fields was definitely, we were looking at both of these guys. We were thinking they were pretty equal. They both had uh, their own, you know, good points and, and low points. So we'll throw the offer out to Fields, call him up, get these things unlocked. Two more categories for Fields. Come on, man. We want to talk to you. Jesus. Give me something. All right. There we go. So, honestly, with our visits, point guard is a huge priority for me. So let's get out and talk with him about our facilities. Uh, the shooting guard is not a priority. Small forward, yeah, we'll we'll go ahead and, and get small forward, one of the centers, and the power forward. So he's huge into location. Uh, let's just go talk about what he wants to hear about. It's not like we're across the world or anything. You never know. Go location with minor and Trico. Ooh, he wants to hear about location too. Facilities, PT, coach discipline. Yeah, let's go with coach discipline on him. You know, I feel like that should be a clear advantage for us. So let's just see how this works. Uh, you don't have to have the city name on the logo, no. Uh, uh, I think like the, the Seattle logo just said Sonics. Uh, I don't remember Vancouver's should have been similar to whatever the Grizzlies do now. I don't remember like the, the name or like the city being in Vancouver or whatever. So, All right, first week of in-home visits. Guys, land in one. Just land in one, I'd be fine. If we land two or three, we're looking real good. If we land zero, that'll be frustrating. Not unexpected, but frustrating. So, no decisions that week. And that's actually a good thing for us because we were not on many of these top ten lists. All these guys thought it went well. Cole especially thought it went well. So we're going back and doing the same exact thing again on all four of these players. Starting off with Cole. We've moved up to sixth on his list. Fields were still not in the top ten. He might not have been crazy about that location pitch. Let's give him a little facilities. See if he warms up to that anymore. Minor. Still not in his top ten. Uh, but we will give him one more run on location before we get start to get worried about things. And as far as centers go, not in Trico's top 10 either. We can still pitch that discipline, though. He liked it last week. Hopefully he still likes it. Hopefully his parents still like it. Um, hopefully that nudges us up a little bit. So we'd probably, probably still like to see... Um, you know, hopefully Cole would come in, 
But we still may not see any commitments, and if we do, they, they might go against us. But so be it. A little look at our out-of-conference this year. Got a handful of away games. Top 20 game against Florida State. Uh, Penn State on the road. Minnesota on the road. So a handful of interesting games there. We'll let that slide. I, I think we should be able to play with those kind of teams at this point. And I'm excited to watch those games and see how they go. So uh, I'm not going to go in and change anything there. Uh, so there we go. Brian Cole gave us the verbal agreement to attend Tulane. The number one priority that I wanted to bring in, he's committed. The bad news is we got a lot of emails. All these other decisions are going to go against us. And it's a lot of them. So Bogans is going to Tulsa, Trico to Indiana, Crozier to Belmont, Fields to Oklahoma, Minor to Arkansas. So Cole is the only one that we got. We went one for six out of our first seven scholarship offers. But again, we brought in the number one target. Uh, we really just need to get some depth on the inside. Point guard was what we absolutely had to have. We don't know what's going on with center. We know we've got a power forward and a small forward coming along. We've still got shooting guards for another year. Uh, point guard was what I absolutely needed to get moving, and we nailed it. So let's do it all again. See if we can find some new targets here. All right, so he's decent at Memphis. Yeah, the, the NBA draft should just be two rounds, uh, and you just pick. Like, you'll get assigned to a position based on your record, and the first 13, 14 picks of the draft are done in a lottery system. So, uh, like, you might have the worst record, but you might get the third or fourth pick uh, just because they do, like, a ping-pong ball machine, something or other, but... Call your Simon was all right. Hampton. So we're up on his list. Antoine Williams has no interest. Irwin Cleveland. Heck of a name. All right, so we don't have a lot of camp anything there. So I think, was it Simon or Hampton? Simon was decent at Memphis. Hampton we don't really have a good, a good beat on. But we're in his top ten. With Simon, we are not. Got a better feeling about Hampton. I don't know. Let's call him up, unlock some of this, and see. You know, anytime we're, we jump up into somebody's top ten, and um, you know we haven't even done an in-home visit, we haven't even made an offer. I, I can go for that. So he's big into academics, and and I think we can we can talk about that. We don't have to be embarrassed about our academics. All right, so we're down to one of the small forwards that was on our list. He was pretty good at Memphis. He does have interest. He's definitely getting an offer here. Come on. 100% would like to unlock all of his pitch categories so we make sure that we know what we're doing when we're going to talk to him. All right, facilities. So again, that, that works out for us all right. Again, we're not going to hang with Kansas if he has an interest in that sort of thing. Look at Louisville jumping up, snagging a top 35 power forward there. Love it. Clifford Branch, who uh, did good in camp but still has no interest. Eric Roberts, tremendous work ethic. Didn't stand out at Memphis. Not great rebounding stats. How about old Rufus? 
didn't stand out at Memphis. Has a little bit better statistics. So maybe this is where we take a shot on an international. We'll see what happens, right? A lot of times they're into either conference prestige or facilities. Very important. All right. Let's go in and talk to him about that. Yeah, facilities definitely going to be a good pitch with him. Oh, we don't have the... Oh, we're out of budget. Shoot. That went quick, guys. Uh, we c should be able to still visit some kind of center here. Yeah, we can get one more visit in here, and we're going to get it right here with Jonathan Harris. We're in his top ten. Uh, tremendous work ethic. Let's... What do we want to talk about? Facilities? Yeah, we'll talk about facilities again with him. Get the offer out. All right, so Harris is getting an offer. Dominic Morris getting an offer at the power forward. Gerbic is getting an offer. Is that one, two, three? Did we ever get a shooting guard offer out? No. Did we make a decision on this? We went with Hampton, right? All right, there we go. That's all we can do, guys. Limited budget, uh, limited prestige, shoot for the moon. We definitely landed a very solid point guard, and if that's all that we get, we're all right, I promise. Would love to pull in a couple more. So although we do have one more week of in-home visits available, we're fresh out of cash. Trying to recruit six players on a budget of like twenty five thousand was not ideal. You know those three transfers really hurt uh, because we did all of our preparation uh, assuming that we were only going after three players. So Gerbic going to Louisville, uh, my Cardinals burning me up there. Rick Lang headed to Furman, so no luck from either of them. Harris had a good visit. Hampton had a good visit. All right, so we're still in on, what, three of our five? And that happens. Once you miss out on that first wave, you're constantly reevaluating. Ah, hold on. We got to switch over to only the watch list because a lot of these players, since we don't have any budget anymore, they disappear off of the call list. All right. So, yikes. The power forwards are looking slim. J.J. Morris, though, he was a he was a camp performer, I believe, out of the um, Georgia Superstar camp. So, we're definitely throwing an offer out to him. He... I've, de I've had those guys come in uh, out of that Georgia Superstar camp, very low rated like that, you know, five, six hundred ratings, one and two stars, and they start from day one in their four-year starter. So uh, I'm not scared at all to throw that offer out to him. Small forward, we are fresh out of any kind of targets. We have no interest at small forward. Looks like we're just going to have to take a pass on that position this year. Um... All right, so, I mean, we're out of budget. There's not really anything to do. We could make phone calls, but it doesn't make any sense because we can't go in and visit anybody to make these pitches. So, really, we are leaving it in our assistant coach's hands, jumping over to the inbox, and we're going to sim week by week all the way up until the start of the season here. Uh, the only thing that we will do as people declare for other schools is we'll throw out some more offers. And I'm sure that that will happen. We haven't lost our last recruit for the year. Virtually certain of that. Hampton going to Maryland. Harris is coming in. Morris going to Xavier. All right, so one for three there. 
out of our remaining shooting guards, I really liked McDermott. He had some injury problems, but at this point, uh, we'll take what we can get. Offer to Morris, still outstanding. Oh, brutal. We got hosed as far as the center. Oh, no, no, no. We, we picked up Harris. Uh, let's take a shot at this other international who's also averaging. I mean, he's, look at us. Out of every center we targeted, he's got the best points per game. He's third in rebounds per game. And he's got a low rating, but I'm happy with that offer as well. We're not wasting scholarships. I refuse to completely waste a scholarship. But I don't feel like anything that we've sent out right now is at all a waste. Most of what we're recruiting outside of that point guard is just depth and, and emergencies. You know, the small forward is the one I do wish we had a, a backup of some sort. But, you know, to not have one isn't the end of the world. We can always throw out some offers later if we absolutely needed to, but I don't really think we're desperate. It's McDermott going to Oklahoma. So, call your Simon from Louisiana. Had a decent camp. You're getting an offer, my man. No decisions that week. I think we ought to get... I can't remember exactly when the game start. Another week? Is this the last week we get to sim right now? But the nice thing is all these offers will stay outstanding, and a lot of these guys will commit like before you even get to the new year. Hopefully they're committing to our school. But, yeah, the, the team's extremely deep right now, even after losing those three transfers. But the good news is, you know, the guys that we got, Especially the point guard is really, really good. I mean, uh, again, we're recruiting at a school that's below 40 prestige. Uh, we got a point guard, two, two four-star players, one a point guard, top 10 point guards in the nation, a uh, center here also in the top 100. That's still a heck of a haul at this school. Uh, we're just missing the volume that we would like to have. But six scholarships, anytime I find myself with six scholarships, I've always got difficulty bringing those guys in uh, without fail. Unless I'm on a very easy level at a very high prestige school. Uh, so uh, I'm still perfectly happy with this class. This is good, um, you know, solid depth. Uh, not wasting scholarships. We've got scholarship offers out to two more guys on the inside. They're both lower ranked, but I've got high expectations of both of them, along with another shooting guard who was still uh, did very well at, uh, not very well, but he, he did well at the regional camp. So we've only got two out of our six scholarships filled as of right now. Only three of the other ones have offers outstanding. We'll hold one of those scholarships, let it roll over into next year. And, you know, the next time that we stream, we'll see how those other three offers go. Uh, we're pretty much to the end of guys that I'm very interested in offering, probably. Uh, so if those guys start to drop off, we may not send out other offers. Uh, but for now, we still have three decent options. So uh, I said at the beginning, you know, a couple of these guys is really all that we could expect. If we got three or four of them, it'd be great. So uh, that's still very much an option still very much something that could happen uh, but we're going to go ahead and cut the stream off here before we get into games uh, next stream we'll get into the games and i'll get you all the way through the season uh, and it'll it'll be uh, one of the few times that we'll actually get the second half of our recruiting here uh, as we see who else commits as the season goes on but uh, just one more peek here at our recruiting class your two lane green wave once again bringing in two top 100 players uh brian cole the point guard it's going to be vital to our team moving forward. Jonathan Harris is going to give us great depth, uh, and he's really a huge insurance policy. When you look here to the middle and see Jay Malone, the senior, going to be leaving us. B.B. Higgins is a junior, going to be a senior. So uh, we, need some fresh, uh, we need some fresh bodies in here in the middle. 
Uh, we do have Lee, who's a big 6'8 sophomore. He should still be around, but he's not developing just yet. Uh, Kevin London's looking great if that evaluation holds up. Uh, so, you know, that center will be great back here. Uh, Brian Cole may be as good, if not better, than Haywood right out of the gate. So another big get there. Uh, so, yeah, not a huge deep class, but as long as we're bringing in value, I'm all right with it. You know, sometimes you'll miss out on some recruits. Sometimes you have players transfer out, whatever the case may be. Uh, guys, I hope that you all enjoyed the stream. I uh, hope that you all are all as excited as I am to see how season six with the Tulane Green Wave goes. Uh, hopefully we're dancing again. Hopefully we're back in that Sweet 16. Hopefully D.D. Higgins you know, gets his game going. Marquette Holmes making a push toward that Norton list. Uh, so we'll check it out, guys. I uh, appreciate you all stopping by the stream. Make sure you're subscribed, like, follow, all that good stuff. And I'll see you all next time.